Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly here, and today I am going to be showing you how to validate a credit card number using Kotlin. So let's get right into it. So, in order to validate a credit card, we can do the following steps. Firstly, we need to convert our input into an array of integers or digits, ranging from 0 to, to 9. After that, starting from the right, we double every other digit. If that digit is greater than 9, we mod it by 10 and then add 1 onto the remainder. After that, we add up all the digits. Then, if that sum total is a multiple of 10, it's a valid credit card number, otherwise it's invalid. This is a form of check digit validation. So let's get right into it. We have got a bunch of print lines here, and we're going to be validating a bunch of different credit cards. We've got some Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and a few others that I can't remember off the top of my head because I am not a true credit card warrior yet. So let's go into find this is valid credit card number function. So we are going to do is valid credit card number card num colon string colon boolean. So basically, this is a function. It's called is valid card number. The only parameter we're going to have is a card num, and it's going to be a string, and we're going to return a boolean because true or false, true for valid, false for invalid. At the top of your code, make sure you import java.lang.exception, because we'll be needing this for our try-catch. Then, back in our isValidCardNumber function, we're going to do a try-catch statement. We are going to do try catch e exception, and basically we're going to try some code. If something goes wrong, execute what's in the catch, and then carry on. If nothing goes wrong, we just execute everything in the try and then carry on as normal. We're going to do if cardnum.length is not in 13.16, return false. This is a cool way of doing a range check in Kotlin. So basically, if the length of this credit card is not in the range of 13 to 16, it's invalid. So it has to be 13, 14, 15 or 16 digits long to be a valid credit card number. So basically, if this is invalid, there's no point doing the whole checksum. Like, because if this isn't valid, then it, it can't be valid. So we return false because there's no point carrying on. After that, we are then going to do val digits equals card num dot map character colon colon get numerical value dot two int array. Now this might seem confusing, but this line of code is basically going to convert this string into an integer array. And this integer array each element is going to be one digit from that string. So we've basically got a really easy way now to interact with each digit of this credit card number on its own. This is why we're, we're doing a try catch statement because in theory, if let's say you inputted a bunch of letters, this could throw an error because you're trying to convert them to an integer, which you can't really do. So we're doing this in a try catch for this reason. After that, we have got a for loop. So we've got for i in digits.size minus two, down to zero, step two. Now, what's going on here? We're actually just doing the step of starting from the right, double each other digit. If greater than nine, mod 10 and add one onto the remainder. This bit of code is going to loop through this integer array backwards, but we're going to be doing every other element as opposed to every element, which is why we've got step two. Obviously, down to zero means we're going to go to the complete end. And i in digit size minus two, that's going to impact where we're going to start. Inside, we are going to do var temp value equals digits i. Then we're going to do temp value times equals two. Because we need to multiply every other digit by two. Then what we're going to do is, if it's greater than nine, so we're going to check if that's greater than nine. We're then going to do temp value equals temp value mod 10, which can be done with a percent symbol, then plus 1. Basically, we're going to mod 10, and then this gets you the remainder, and then we're just going to add 1, because we need to add 1 onto the remainder. Then we do digits i equals temp value. You could, in theory, interact directly with this, but I'd rather take it with a temp value to make it slightly easier to read. And we do this throughout the list because we're doubling every other digit and then checking if it's greater than nine. Then we mod 10 and add one onto the remainder if it is greater than nine. After that, we are then going to do the add up all digit steps. So we do var total equals zero. Then we do for num int in digits total plus equals num. 
basically this just loops through the entire integer array, which is every digit of our credit card number, and we're going to basically just add them together. After that, we are going to do return total percent 10 equals zero. So basically, if we do total percent 10, which is just mod, so total mod 10, we can then check if it's equal to zero, and that's going to tell us if this number is a multiple of 10, because if it's not a multiple of 10, there will be a remainder. But if there's no remainder, or the remainder is zero, that means it's a multiple of 10. So we can do total mod 10 double equals zero to check if this total is a multiple of 10. If it is, this return statement returns a true. If it's not, it returns a false. In the catch code, we just want to return a false because if an error occurs, this isn't a valid credit card number, therefore we want to return a false. And that's it for this tutorial. So we're gonna save and then hit play. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of trues printed because all of these numbers are valid. There'll be a link in the description below to where you can generate valid credit card numbers so you can use them to test your validation. Now I'm going to delete these. I'm going to put some other random numbers in here. So we've got a few invalid credit card numbers. We're going to hit play. And they all say false because they're all not valid. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Kotlin tutorials. Thanks for watching.